Okay. Um, let me let me leap right in by starting a share screen here. So here we are in a scene, if it ever comes to life. So here we are in a scene. We've got these fancy buildings. And I want to go inside one of the buildings. And now we're inside the building. Uh, this is from the Blacksmith's Forge. Uh, over here, we've got another building, a different room inside, similar decor, but a different room. So uh, that, that's what I'm aiming to build here uh, in this lecture on teleportation, kind of a second version of the teleportation. So uh, why would we want to do this? Uh, and how would we want to do this? Well, uh, we do this by using different scenes, uh, similar to the way we uh, changed the level back when we were deploying multi-level games. And the reason for doing this is uh, obvious from the example there. We have a very detailed outdoor scene with a full terrain populated with details, uh, trees, grass, buildings, horses, so forth. Um, and we want to go inside one of these buildings and we find we have a, a high level of detail within the room. And it would be very expensive to keep all the stuff that's inside the building as well as all the stuff that's outside the building. And uh, so instead, uh, we'll teleport between these two different scenes, one that's the interior and another that's the exterior. Um, if you had a complicated building with a lot of rooms, you could actually do this with the individual rooms of a building. Um, this is fairly easy to do. We have our scene manager load scene command. Uh, and uh, we use this with our menu system to choose the easy level and the hard level. Uh, we use this when we level up in a multi-level game. Now, with those scenarios, uh, when we loaded the scene, we started with a complete scene with all the details of the world and the character uh, initially at the plot in the spot we wanted the, the game to start. But with this scenario where we're going from one scene to another, we want to be able to take our character with us. In particular, if our player has health or point score or player status script that maintains uh, your, your standing in the game, in order to maintain that and keep it up to date, uh, we, uh, we don't want to have a character initialized in every scene uh, that, we, that we have. So those two scenes that we saw, the outdoor scene, uh, three scenes, the outdoor scene and the two indoor scenes, none of them had characters to start with. Instead, what we're gonna do is uh, bring our character with us uh, by declaring it to be indestructible with the don't destroy on load command. Um, this is usually done in the start or awake functions, uh, best in the awake function. And this means that our character will persist when we load another scene. And this is why we don't initialize our character in each scene. Um, so we, we do need some place to start. And so we start with a scene called opening scene where all we have is the character uh, and a, a script that loads the first scene of the game. So wherever we're going in the game, uh, it's going to leave this opening scene. Uh, we could have it auto load. If auto load were true, then it would 
just immediately load the scene. There'd be no pause. We wouldn't even see the scene. Otherwise, we can have a trigger on any key or buttons or something else. But uh, this is the scene uh, where our character comes into existence. Um, be aware that when you uh, load a scene with, with a don't destroy on load object, that it appears in the new scene exactly where it was in the original scene. So uh, you have to be careful in positioning your character in this opening scene so that uh, when you transition into the outdoor scene or whatever, it, it appears where you want it to be in that uh, beginning scene. So uh, now that we're in our scene with our uh, indestructible character, uh, in, in our, our play scene here, our first one, we're gonna have various portals. Uh, they can be doors or magic objects or teleporter pads or whatever. Uh, uh, that will tag as door trigger. And each portal's name, uh, a name is a string, will be the same as the name of the scene that we want to teleport to. And if you recall, the uh, load uh, level command takes either the integers that are the, the uh, scene's position in the build settings or its string name. We have that choice. Um, we're going to use this information in the script teleport manager that will attach to our character. So let's have a look at that script. Um, first of all, because I wanted to access the first person controller for reasons you'll see in a little while, and I didn't want to have to type out this whole list in order to have the type, I can here use using unity standard assets dot character dot first person. And this uh, uh, library now controls a reference to the first person controller that I can access directly without having to drill down into the namespace that that, that script lives in. All of these could be private. I've left them kind of public for debugging purposes. Now, since I'm going to access the first person controller, the FPC, um, it, it turns out that I have to be able to uh, I, uh, do something to the FPC that requires a modification of the standard asset script. So I had to go into standard assets, find the first person controller script, edit it, and I needed to add a public Boolean variable reset, uh, initially uh, false, uh, up at the beginning of the class, and then later in the update function, right at the beginning of the upset update function, I say if reset is true and initially it's false, then I'm going to do this mouse look in it transform m camera dot transform, and I'll reset reset back to false and return. So I'll abandon the update function for that cycle, for that frame, uh, uh, with this command to reset the camera. Uh, what this does is it overrides the uh, first person controller's desire to point the character in a particular direction that we don't want as we enter a new scene. We're going to be actually orienting the, the character when it comes into the new scene. And this was the only way to override it. So uh, back to teleport manager. Now in the start, we'll catch a component catch the first person controller component. Uh, here's where we set don't destroy on load, transform game object. So this is saying that our object is, is not going to be destroyed. And uh, I'm going to catch also a copy of this start level uh, with the get active screen by name. Uh, so this stores in start level that uh, scene that we start in. I'm not sure I ever use this again, but we have it in case we need it. In update, we're similarly going to keep track of the current level's scene name. So in update, and this is all we're doing in update, is keeping track of what the active scene's name is and storing it in current level. Now, uh, all of this happens when our uh, uh, character uh, 
through its uh, character controller collides with something. So on controller collider hit will, uh, is going to do the heavy lifting here. And I want it to be a coroutine. So I've, instead of void, it's an I enumerator. And this is going to mean that I can do my yield statements that uh, are very important for controlling synchronization of things. So uh, if, if there's a, uh, uh, a hit to the collider, um, this is going to return the object that hit it. And I can check its tag to see if it's a door trigger. If it is, I'm going to do something. If it isn't, I'm all done with on controller collider hit. So the things that I do here, the object that I've hit, the door trigger that I've hit, its name is the same as the name of the scene that I want to go to. So uh, where to is the object that I've hit's name. And uh, I can then use that to load the scene that I want to go to. So if the door goes to the outside or to uh, in, into the, uh, uh, the cabin or whatever it is, uh, whatever that scene is, uh, where to is going to go there. Before I leave this scene, I catch the active scene name last level. I'm going to use this to locate the door uh, in front of which I want to end up in the new scene. I want to appear to have come out of the door that goes back to the scene that I just left. So last level is the uh, scene that I'm leaving, where to is the scene that I'm going to. Now that we're in the new scene, uh, uh, we pause for a fixed update. This lets things kind of uh, manifest. Uh, this level is the where to we carried with us. Uh, and I'm now going to look for the door whose name corresponds to last level. That's the, the thing that we caught just as we left the previous scene. Now, because things don't all come into existence at, at once, I found it was necessary to put a while not go loop in here that spins on this game object find last level. Uh, if I just did a geo equal game object find last level, it would often not find it and then it'd be confused and things didn't work. And this little spinning while loop uh, lets us find that last level as the, the, the scene comes into existence. Uh, this is one of the reasons I made it a, a I enumerator, a, a coroutine, is so that I could do this yield return null, which is the same as wait for uh, uh, next frame. Uh, and so it spins here, waiting one frame each until it finds the game object last level. And uh, the Next door then is the, the go transform, the door that I want to put my character in front of uh, for uh, 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 as if it had just come out of the door that goes back to the room that I just left. Uh, having found the door that corresponds to that last scene, I now need to re reset the FPC so that so that this transform rotation works, because otherwise the FPC orient overrides that. I'm going to position the character three units in front of the door. So here's my next door transform direction vector forward. So this puts me three units in front of the door. This means when you set up these doors, you have to orient them correctly so that their forward direction points into the room that you're entering. Um, and uh, the rotation is the door's rotation, and I'm assigning that to my character transform. Uh, then I wait a tenth of a second for things to settle down, and, uh, and, and I can go on. So what we did, object was the object we collided with. If its tag is door trigger, we catch a copy of, the, of its name in the where to. 
before we transition to the where to level, we catch the name of the current level, last level. After the transition, we use that last level to find by name the portal, the next door, that leads back into the level that we just left. And we position our characters three meters in front of the door, uh, facing uh, oriented to have the same uh, orientation as our door, and uh, we're done. So let me show you this kind of in a, in a simple scene here. Where to go? Um, so I can close this one. So here I am in the in the, the beginning scene. There's my character on top of the little pedestal. I just wanted to, to be up in the air so that I was sure that I wouldn't manifest underneath the ground somewhere. Uh, uh, I've positioned this carefully so that uh, it, it's, it's at a particular location that is where I want it to manifest in the next game. Uh, I, I have the option of pressing any key or I can set the auto load to true, in which case it's just gonna go into the next scene. Incidentally, all these scenes have to be in the build settings, otherwise it doesn't work. So here I am in a scene. Um, let me make it full screen here so that we can see it. So uh, they're, they're my portals. I put doorknobs on them so that I know the orientation. This is uh, the uh, forward side of the door. Uh, and I enter the green door and now I'm in the green scene. And behind me is the red door that goes back to the red level. If I back up, I'll go back into the green level. Uh, and uh, I have other, others, whoops. I have other scenes over, other doors over here. Here's a door that goes to the blue scene. Uh, notice I didn't have to enter the door perpendicularly and I still came out of it. The green door goes back to the green. Uh, the blue door goes into the blue. Here's a red door over here. I can go through the red door and now I'm back in the red scene. Notice I never go back to that opening scene. Uh, if you ever did go back to the opening scene because it has a character don't destroy on, you didn't have two copies of the, of the character. So you never want to go back to that scene. So, uh, and that's all set up exactly the way uh, I had it there. So let me close that one. And uh, here now is a, a scene where I have uh, basically two rooms. I have an outdoor scene. Uh, the outdoor scene is this big world with uh, topography and terrain. And I've got this, uh, I've got this uh, uh, power plant here uh, and it has a door. And if you look inside the power plant, you notice there's nothing there. Uh, uh, Unity only renders one side of objects in general. And uh, so there's actually nothing inside this thing. It's an empty object. Uh, it's not even visible from the other side. If you were to walk inside this thing, uh, it, it would essentially disappear. And the other scene that I have is this, uh, is, this uh, is a, a, a sewer scene. Well, uh, some kind of power plant scene. Um, it's, it's got stuff inside it, uh, but it doesn't even have outer walls. Uh, the walls are only visible from the inside of it because again, Unity only bothers to render one side of a texture. So here's my, here's my opening scene. Uh, I've got my little character standing on a pedestal so that I could make sure he was high enough. Uh, <coughs> And uh, all I've got in here is a script somewhere here, uh, somewhere here, uh, that's going to auto load the same script I showed you. And so away we go. Uh, 
Uh, and so here we are in our in our world outside. Um, these are uh, teleport to objects like from the last lecture. So this takes me way up on the hill here so that I can look at the view. Uh, I've got another one here that actually these kind of teleport from one to another to another. Now we're up on top of the factory. Uh, now we're further up on top of the factory, up on one of the rims. And finally, this goes back down to the ground in front of the door. So here we go into the building. So now we're inside here. Um, uh, sorry. W. This has a little internal teleport. If you jump into the into the lake, it pops you back up. Uh, and uh, this interior scene is all rendered. Uh, uh, there's nothing outside it. It's not like there's an outside here, even though we can go back outside and uh, pop around and so forth. Now, if you'll bear with me, I just want to show you another scene here or another uh, game. Uh, and unfortunately, this only works in 217. So I don't think I can actually show it to you. Oh, it's only it wants to work in five. Maybe that's not the right one. The right one. Okay, so bear with me while this loads. And if it fails, I'll just I'll make a second movie with with this one. Um, I'm afraid it's going to take a long time to load. It is. Um, what I'll do is I'll, I'll I'm going to stop this and post it. So um, I'll I'll come back with a second video that has the picture of that other scene that I wanted to show you because uh, it's nowhere near ready. So I'll stop the share screen here and I'll end the recording and I'll see you all in class and uh, stay tuned for the, uh, the next little uh, snippet. When, once I get it loaded. Bye.